Hey guys, so I figured I was going to go ahead and jump on this whole draw my life bandwagon. A lot of you guys really wanted me to do it. I thought it'd be kind of hard. I didn't really know if I wanted to throw that much personal life out on YouTube, but I figured, what the heck. You guys are fans of Jay's Two Cents and you want to know a little more about me, so I figured I'll go ahead and do that. For starters, my real name is Jason and my middle name is Scott. However, I dodged a bullet because my middle name almost became Rutherford. Uh, but my dad said hell no and he put his foot down and my middle name became Scott. I was born on June 3rd, 1981. And what I think is funny about that, when I look at old family photos, my dad still had an afro. But I was supposed to be born on May 12th, 1981, so I was a little late to my own party. I was born in a suburb of Boston called Newton. You guys may have recognized that name from recent events in Boston. I wasn't born to a very big family. In fact, my mother and my father had previous marriages in which they both had other kids. We'll get more to that later. My dad's name is Robert, and my mom's name is Peggy. And I had a six-year older sister, uh, and her name is Debbie. She wasn't too keen on having a little brother. In fact, she uh, asked at one point if she could uh, put me back. And an important point, there is no E on the end of her name. It is Debbie with an I. Do not make the mistake of putting an E or she gets very upset. And that's me running around terrorizing her, going bang bang, shooting her with guns and really terrorizing her life because that's what little brothers do to big sisters. As I mentioned, both of my parents had previous marriages in which they had other kids. By the time I came around, all of the other kids were already grown and out of the house except for my older sister, Debbie. My mom had a daughter named Nanette. She was a half-sister. We call her Nan. And she has another daughter, which you already heard of. It's my half-sister, Debbie. She's uh, still close to me to this day. My dad had three boys on his side. He had uh, Robert Jr., Daniel, and David and all three of them were also grown and out of the house long before I was a twinkle in my mother's eye, as my dad used to say. So I don't have very close relationships with them because I never really got a chance to know them. My dad was a career military man. He spent over 20 years in the Navy as a weapons instructor. He was in the CBs. He was also in the Frogmen. He did a lot of stuff in the military. He was a bona fide badass. You've heard me talk about him before. After putting in more than 20 years in the United States Navy, uh, my dad retired from the military and started his own business doing project management for the government and private businesses. My mom, she was a records keeper and a police dispatcher for the Dallas Police Department and then the Ontario Police Department once we moved to California. She retired and she worked nights, which was fine with me because I didn't get to see her much during the day when I was young. We had moved from Newton all the way to Upland, California when I was only one. And then from Upland, when I was four, we moved to a little city called Rialto. It's about 60 miles east of Los Angeles. Not a whole lot to see here. Most of you have probably never heard of it. Can't say I blame you. When I was a kid, I remember my father spending lots and lots of time on his computer doing programming, writing software, working, and being a self-employed uh, entrepreneur and our entire livelihood depended on it. From the time that I was a little baby leaving dollops of poop behind me apparently, uh, I can remember my dad playing around on his computers and as I started to get older, I started to get interested in computers and my first computer was a Commodore 64 and it was a really old computer that you had to do command lines and he had to have command prompts to make the programs run and I was so excited that I could run my own programs that my dad, I remember him sitting behind me and saying, that's my boy, because I was only three years old the first time I ever learned how to use a Commodore 64 and if you've never seen one, it's not like today, you don't put in a you know, CD and push play and off you go, you had to manually do stuff. My sister, on the other hand, uh, since we had such a big age difference and she was six years older than me, by the time I was old enough to do anything, and that's a cord coming off the phone, by the way, we're talking the 80s here, uh, I was an annoying little brother. And almost anything I did really seemed to bother her, but I think that's kind of normal when you have that kind of age gap. I'm leaving my toys around and I'm asking her to play with me and she's telling me, go away, you're annoying. And she's trying to play with her boyfriends and you know her friends and do the things that girls do, which I didn't understand whatsoever. And to this day, I honestly still don't. My parents tell me that when I was a small child, they could put me on the floor with some toys or a coloring book or a book, and I would spend hours and hours just playing and being quiet and not making messes and just being the best little boy that you could possibly imagine because I was in a whole lot of trouble. I was very quiet and I was very, very shy. But then came the very first day of school and that all changed. 
I do remember my first day of kindergarten. I was terrified. My mom dropped me off and she went off to work and I was afraid because I didn't know what was going to happen. I didn't know any of the kids and it was very, very scary. But the school had this uh, racetrack out front where we could take our tricycles and we could ride around and some of them had a wagon and I always pulled uh, the girls around and I became a ladies man at the age of kindergarten and I became known as the uh, kindergarten pimp. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. But I love school so much I came home and I haven't shut up since. And I was blah, 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 school, school, school. And my mom said, I never stopped talking since the first day of kindergarten and here I am going on 32 years old and I'm still talking and doing it somewhat for a living. But as with most people in school, there became a time when I was bullied. I was called stupid, I was called retarded, I was called fat. Even though I wasn't fat, I was still called fat. And of course it was happening by a group of boys that were constantly making my life a living hell. And I didn't have any friends, so that made things just that much more lonely and that much more difficult. This same group of kids every single day never let up. They used to sit there and block my entrance into the cafeteria and tell me that I wasn't welcome and that I was ugly and that I had no friends and that I shouldn't be in there and I didn't belong and that I should just go out into the schoolyard and sit in the grass by myself and eat lunch because nobody wanted to be around me because I smelled. And I spent pretty much every day of school by myself outside. This didn't only happen at school. This same group of boys would hide behind trees and hide behind bushes and they knew where I lived and they would stop somewhere along the path of the school in my house and they would wait for me behind trees and when I would come riding by on my bike they would be waiting for me and next thing I know they're throwing uh, rocks at me and one of them one time hit me in the face and I remember falling off my bike and all of the other school kids were there and saw it and nobody did anything. Nobody tried to help, nobody tried to make them stop. I just was completely alone in that situation. But I do remember one day in the second grade, a new kid moved into the school and he immediately became my friend. His name was Nathan and he was a little bit older than me. And so he was kind of like a role model because he told me, don't listen to those guys. Those guys are stupid. They're, you don't worry about them. Just come hang out with me. So we did all sorts of stuff together and we used to play tetherball and go on the swings and we talked about games because we had Nintendo and we just had a really good time and I wasn't being bullied so much. But one day, uh, Nathan told me that he had to move. His father was in the military and they were moving. So once again, I found myself by myself in the playground, rocks being thrown and being bullied every single day of my life. It was so bad, I looked for reasons not to go to school. Like every other kid who's ever been bullied, I pretended to be sick. Uh, but that only works for so long before your parents realize you're faking and they think you just don't want to go to school, but you don't really tell them the truth because you just are kind of ashamed that you are being bullied and you're not sticking up for yourself. One day in middle school, uh, this had been going on for a solid five years by this point at least, uh, this same kid every single day would keep pestering me and calling me names and blocking my way and knocking things out of my hand. But by now I had grown taller and I had grown bigger, but my self-esteem had been so damaged that I still allowed myself to be bullied. And I remember once I told my dad about this bully and his advice to me was defend yourself. So one day this kid cornered me in the locker room at the gym and he wouldn't let me leave. And at this point I became very angry and I saw red and I remember just losing control and I punched this kid square in the face and next thing I knew he was on the ground and all of his friends couldn't get out of there fast enough. I've never been bullied a day in my life since that event. That's the first time in my life I felt like I'd actually stood up for myself and my confidence was running high. I was feeling good, uh, nobody was messing with me, and things were going pretty good for me. In fact, that computer thing I talked about earlier, the computer aides and the computer lab used to regularly call me out of class because they needed help fixing the computers because they didn't know how to fix them. So you can kind of consider that my very first IT gig. Life went on as it generally has a way of doing, I went into high school and I became into sports. I was really good at tennis. I even coached tennis. I played on the tennis team for the school. I played football. Uh, I was big, I was strong, and I had a lot of friends. Things were going pretty good for me. And then I noticed I really was shy 
I had a hard time talking to people. I, girls would approach me and they would want to hang out and they would tell me that they thought that I was cute or that I was funny. And I noticed they had boobs and I liked it. Uh, but I was still really shy. But my very first girlfriend, I remember we did everything together and one day she uh, cheated on me and she broke my heart. But that's okay, a new girl came along and once again, she cheated on me and broke my heart. I started to really have a hard time trusting people because of the bullying and the girls making fun of me and I just had a really hard time uh, dealing with it and I noticed I started to cope with food and I started to put on weight. By this time I figured who would want to be with a fat loser like me and all of those things that the kids used to call me back in grade school and middle school started to come back and haunt me. But this one girl came and she said I think you're cute and I think you're funny and she started to bring back my confidence and I started to work out and I started to lose weight. I had just graduated high school and we were falling in love and when I was 18 I asked her to marry me and she said yes. I was really excited. I thought my life was going forward and I couldn't wait to see what was next. But one day she told me she was moving to San Diego because she was going to live with her mom. She had been living with her grandma up until that point. So I said, okay, that's fine. We can make this work. So every single weekend I would hop in my truck and I would drive down to San Diego and she would be there waiting for me with her boobs and everything was great and I was happy and she was happy and we were planning out our life and I had spent all of my money to get her an engagement ring and she lived at the marina in uh, San Diego, which is where they park the boats. And she lived on a boat. I came to surprise her one day and I brought some flowers and I didn't tell her I was coming down to San Diego to visit her. And one of her coworkers, she worked at the restaurant, stopped to tell me that she was at the pool. So I thought that was a little bit weird because he had kind of a weird look on his face. So I went to the pool to see what was going on. And there she was, she was in the pool and I could see her. She was kind of swimming around. There were other people in the pool. And next thing I know, she grabs one of the uh, muscly six pack uh, marina guys that you would expect to see and they kiss. And right as I was walking up, I couldn't believe what I saw. And I yelled out, what the hell? And she turned around and she was very sad. And the guy she was with told me to get lost. And at that point I just walked away and she chased me down and I asked her for the truth and the truth was a little more than I think that I could handle because I found out that there were a lot more people in fact she had cheated on me 13 times since we'd become engaged I was entirely crushed I, I didn't know how to handle it I had never at that point been with anyone who hadn't cheated on me and every single relationship I had just ended with the same result of being cheated on. And I thought about ending my life on that trip home from San Diego and just driving off of a cliff. But I decided that I was gonna get even, and that this was Jay's turn to make somebody get hurt. Why did I always have to be the one who was being hurt all the time? So I set out to find somebody that I could get to trust me and then intentionally cheat on them. That way for once, I'm not the one that's always being hurt. So I met this really cool girl after dating somebody that didn't work out for only a couple of days and it turned out that she thought I was cute and I told her that she was pretty fly because it was 1999 and that's the way we talked in the 90s so don't judge me. I, I still think she's fly to this very day. But I told myself, I don't care if I'm falling in love with this girl, I'm gonna break her heart because that's what I set out to do. But next thing I knew, I forgot all about those plans and I fell in love with this girl and she had entirely rekindled my hope that maybe I could be married one day, but alas, we broke up because uh, all of the things that had happened to me in the past just kept coming and haunting me and I was a mean person and we broke up. But we got back together and next thing I know, I asked her to marry me and we're getting married and everything is happy and it's beautiful and she's got this gorgeous dress and there's beautiful music playing on October 15th in 2005, I married my soulmate. And you guys know her today as Miss J's Two Cents. This woman took me and returned me back to the kind of person that I thought I was uh, going to be, but something was happening to me. I was changing. I was putting on a lot of weight. My self-confidence was gone. And I was turning to food as a comfort coping mechanism and I had grown to nearly 500 pounds. Well, one day I was on my way to work and I was sitting in traffic on the freeway and a big truck hit me from behind doing 60 miles per hour and it completely crushed my vehicle. And this is when I realized I had hit rock bottom because it took eight firefighters to lift me on the gurney and to put me in the ambulance. I was so big, I didn't even fit in the MRI machines. I couldn't even get a CAT scan because I was too big to fit in any of the emergency room equipment. That's when I made the choice to get bariatric 
uh, gastric bypass surgery. And on May 27th, 2009, one of the nation's leading experts on bariatric surgery gave me a laparoscopic version of the surgery and I began to lose weight. And next thing I know, day after day, I'm getting skinnier and I'm getting skinnier and my confidence is coming back and I'm starting to be a happy person again. And on April 17th, 2009, the best thing that could possibly happen in my life was about to happen. My wife and I had gone to the hospital and she had a baby monitor hooked up to her and she was having contractions and she was screaming and I was terrified and it was all worth it because next thing I knew, I was a dad and I was so excited and it was a girl and I couldn't believe it. She was so cute. She looked like her mom. She looked like me. I didn't know what to do. I was terrified. I didn't know what kind of dad I was going to be. And I've got my daughter and I've got my wife and I've got my health. But for some reason, that didn't really seem to make any sort of a difference because I kept finding myself sad. I still had no confidence because I had never developed any confidence in myself because of that group of kids my entire life that sat there picking on me. And when I was fat and then as, as an adult, I had adults picking on me. So I never had an opportunity to develop any sort of confidence. So last year on a dare, I started a YouTube channel just where I wanted to talk about different technology things that I really like. I didn't expect it to go anywhere. Didn't expect anybody to watch. I, who would have watched me? I, after all, I was a boring guy. But next thing I knew, people were saying I was funny and I was cool and I was smart and my channel was growing and we're at almost 10,000 subscribers. Sure, there's people on YouTube who still like to say mean and hurtful things, but for every mean comment there is, there's five or six good comments that you guys give me that make me feel better about myself every single day. And it makes me want to go harder. It makes me want to try and do better. And it makes me want to bring you guys the best content that I possibly can and just keep going and just see how far we can take this thing together. Thank you for that. You guys have been instrumental in getting my confidence back. Thank you.